Good news, everyone! There's a very quick and easy way to make molds for metal casting. Uh, you might not want to do it, but we'll, we'll check it out. We'll see what happens. To some of you, especially those of you just starting out with this whole metal casting thing, uh, ramming up a mold, those multiple part molds, is probably kind of confusing looking. Like, why, why are you pouring it off to the side of the hole? And what's with the runners of the metal? And why is there that spinny cylinder dealy? And, and it's, it's just complicated. You might be thinking, like, can I just make the, the hole in the sand and just dump the metal right in? Well, yes. Yes, you can. Like, there's a whole bunch of videos on YouTube of people just having a pattern of something shoved in the sand, and then they just dump the metal in, or into a graphite, open graphite mold, or whatever, and they have a finished casting. And you can do that. It is literally that simple. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Now, there's a reason for all that complication, but I think it's best to show what happens when you just forget all that, and do the, the divot and dump method. Uh, it's called open mold casting. I probably should have led with that. I'm going to go through some of the issues that you have, try to give you some tips to maybe improve those a little, as much as you can anyway. And we're going to cast these. I printed out these. These are, these are just 3D prints, basically just the channel logo. It's got some thickness, and I have a few different sizes. They are not complicated. I whipped this up in Fusion 360 in no time, and then just changed the size, printed them out. This is probably the easiest way to ramp something up. You just use one of these flasks. The, the wood box is called a flask. You generally use two of them. We're just gonna use one today. And these patterns here need something called draft. If you look at the side here, it's angled out. There's kind of a, a flat side that's gonna be at the top and then everything else angles downward. And this is so I can pull it out of the sand without it like grabbing the sand and ripping out chunks of it. If you try to ram it in upside down, because this flares out, it would grab the sand and pull out. That's, that's a, a basic no-no. This is just a couple, couple degrees of draft. That's all you need. Uh, I rammed one of them up in the sand, how you should probably do it. So you put the, the flat side, the side that's supposed to be on the top, down, put the box over it, put sand around, ram it up. The rest of them, what I did, was indent. I just shoved them into the flat sand to leave an indent. You can see as I'm pulling these out of the sand, clearly the one that was rammed in place looks way better. So there's tip number one. Ram the patterns in place. Don't stamp them in later. I'm also using this excuse to make a bunch of little chunks of this metal for reasons that you will see probably next week. Patrons might want to keep an eye out for a sneak peek on that front. You might notice some of the indents go a little deeper than the others. This is to test something called head pressure. So those big like multi-box molds use gravity pulling down on the metal to almost pressurize the mold. Have you ever gone to like a swimming pool and you swim like really, really deep and you can just feel the pressure crushing you in? That's all the liquid above you that's, that's squeezing you in. In, in a mold, if the mold is like tall-ish, the weight of all the liquid metal up above pushing down pushes the metal outward into the little nooks and crannies in the sand. That's how you get better, like better detail in that kind of casting. It fills all the gaps. And you can think of that pouring basin up top kind of like a water tower pressurizing the plumbing in a city. You just put a lot of it really high up. Gravity does all the work. Open mold casting doesn't have that. The metal is just on the top. Your sink might be pressurized by a water tower somewhere nearby, but a pond is not, right? So you might think this kind of casting would, would not lend itself well to fine little details. And you'd be right. The last time I did this, uh, the metal didn't fill in very well. But I have kind of a solution. This is ZA12 alloy. It's a zinc aluminum alloy. I've, I've talked about it a lot recently. I haven't shut up about it. I was calling it Zamic, but a bunch of you people are like, it's not really Zamic. Well, it's sold as Zamic 12. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link down below if you, if you need to find where it is. Previously, I was using A380 die-cast aluminum, which is not as good, not really good. ZA12 flows much better. And that's important because you want the flow to like flow into the corners. You don't want it to like ball up like a drop of water on top of a waxed car. You know, there's so much surface tension it can't lay flat, it stays balled up. Different metals will flow better or worse. This, this is definitely a better metal. Uh, other good ones are like pewter, some bronzes, A356 aluminum, like from car wheels. Uh, the worst one, by the way, is the metal you get from melting aluminum cans. So maybe don't, don't do that. Use the right metal is what I'm getting at. You can make the metal like runnier uh, by getting it hotter. So that can kind of help a little bit. But trust me, there's a limit to that, especially with this stuff. Now for the pour. So I'm using a standard crucible in the tongs I built like a while ago. I'm pouring really slow so I don't like overfill anything. Uh, this is about as low as I can get the crucible to the sand and the metal had to fall quite a ways. You can see the stream forming droplets, kind of like water. This is a common sight here on YouTube casting videos, and it is horrible practice. Have you ever watched like water being poured into a glass? You see all the bubbles getting sucked down in there? Yeah, liquid metal does that too. 
and it can ruin the casting. You get all these like extra little bubbles in there that don't come out. It's not quite as runny as water. They don't come out of there. And an unexpected hole in a casting from these bubbles. It's about as much fun as one in your head. So let's try to avoid that. But metal is a problem that water doesn't. Anywhere the liquid metal hits the oxygen, it oxidizes. You get a skin. You, you might see this a lot. Like if you're seeing metal being poured in, sometimes it'll look like the skin is sitting still, but you can see flowing. Yeah, the skin, the skin is stuck on the top. And that's kind of okay. It floats to the surface. But when you pour it in like that, every drop forms a skin around it. And then it plunges into the metal below and just churns that oxide up in there. And that is a fault. That's a flaw in the casting. Probably not a big deal if you're casting little trinkets like this. But if you're casting something important, like, say, a hammerhead like I did, uh, that, that hammerhead's just full of oxides. And those can be cracks that can form later. So maybe avoid it. Now, one way to fix that, obviously, is to pour the metal from much lower down. Now, this is as low as I can get this crucible because the metal, the crucible is actually sitting on the wood flask. I can get away with that because this alloy melts at such a low temperature and hickory is an absolute beast of a wood. But even better, probably a smaller crucible or one of those, like, ladles. Have you seen the, lad the metal, metal pouring ladles where you can actually pour right down from the surface? Maybe I should get one of those. Or make one? Huh. Okay, so how do these look anyway? Let's find out. This is the one that was rammed in place. Got some sand on there. Not too bad. It does look like it's filled in the details a little bit better than when I did the same thing with aluminum. Wow, the shininess is really screwing with the camera. But you can still kind of see, you know, it didn't quite fill in all the little gaps there. And the edges just aren't that crisp. You get a lot better crispness if you ram them up the normal way. It's still pretty nice, and you can see the, the 3D print track lines. And you see kind of dead center where there's like a dull sand and trained area. I think that's because of the dumping churning effect of me like pouring it all straight into there. And I, you, you got that with the aluminum also. But overall, this isn't bad. Another one for the melt pile again. I'll make one of these badges work eventually. And these two stuck together. This was the really thin one. And see the, the edges are rounded off just a little bit more. See, it's not very thick, so it has even less head pressure. And this one had more head pressure and it looks more detailed. I mean, that alone should tell you head pressure is really important. It is so hard for this camera to focus on the shiny reflective surface. The tiny ones kind of came out. They don't look too great. I definitely overfilled all these. My attempt at making some bars. That, that preserved the, the sticker and the pencil a little better, right? You can read Craftsman, huh? Yeah, this metal's really nice. Just saying. You can see the sand is a little more burned than usual when I've been using this metal lately. Uh, that's because I was trying to get the temperature a bit higher so we would get, you know, better, uh, better detail. It kind of worked. I mean, this is, this is one of the nicer looking ones. By the time I poured this, the metal had cooled off a bit and I got rid of some of that nasty sand stuff. But more on temperatures next week. It's still kind of cool, though. Plenty of things in the real world are cast like this. Uh, but should you be doing this? I can think of only one case where it makes sense. If you're making these kinds of simple like one-sided uh, trinkety things that look cool and they're not structural and you're not gonna machine them. Well, maybe you'll flatten the back or something. You know what I mean? Uh, but they're mainly just aesthetic. Uh, then go nuts, especially if you don't feel like ramming up the other sand thing. Uh, although you could and it would work a lot better. I know I'm certainly not gonna do it much, if ever again. More on how to do this better in the future. So subscribe. For that I guess. The notification bell, that's the real subscription, right? Because the other button just makes like YouTube laugh at us or something. I think that's how it works. Yeah.